Hello everyone, my name is Pallav Agarwal. In this video, I will be talking about Power Profiler Kit 2 from Nordic Semiconductor, which they have released a couple of months back. It's a nice little tool, uh, very useful for power consumption measurement, especially when you are developing low power or battery powered embedded device. I will talk about features of Power Profiler Kit 2, how to connect and how to use the software. I will also show you a demo in which I will measure quiescent current of a DC-DC converter module. Then I will also talk about some of the limitations which are very important for you to understand before taking a decision to buy. And then at the last, we will talk about various alternative tools. If Power Profiler Kit 2 is not suitable for your application or for your requirement, what are the other alternative tools available in the market which you can use? So let us start with features. Power Profiler Kit 2 is a low cost power measurement tool. It costs around $92.5 on Mauser. It can use external power source or with the help of USB also, you can power your device under test. It can measure up to five volt and maximum one ampere. It is very easy to use. Uh, Nordic Semiconductor has already provided freely available NRF Connect software with the help of which you can uh, do power measurement. Now let us see how Power Profiler Kit 2 looks like and how to connect uh, and do some measurement. So this is Power Profiler Kit 2. Very little uh, thin tool. So you have two USB connections. One is for power as well as data. You have on and off switch. And then you have USB power only. If you want to give 600 milliampere to device under test with the help of power profiler kit, you need to use both the USBs. On the other side, you have four pin connector. Two pins are for giving external power in and the two pins are for giving power output. So in ampere mode, you need to provide external power from these two pins and with the help of V out and ground these two pins, it will power your device under test. In Power Profiler Kit 2, they have also provided eight digital input pins which can be used as low speed logic analyzer and you will be able to analyze power consumption by toggling GPIOs at certain situation. For example, you want to measure how much your device consumes when your Bluetooth transmitter works. What you can do is you can make a digital IO high when you are transmitting and low when you are not transmitting. So by looking at the logic level of that pin along with the power consumption graph, you will be able to identify how device is consuming power when the device is transmitting the data over Bluetooth. So it's a nice uh, feature they have added in Power Profiler Kit 2. Okay, so along with this uh, Power Profiler board, they are providing a jumper wire cable for digital IOs as well as four pin cable for connecting an external power supply or device under test. So it will come with uh, these uh, jumper pins. So all four wires will be with these kind of uh, female terminations. I have uh, removed them just uh, for my convenience because I wanted to solder them directly on the board. For the demo, I will use this DC to DC converter module from a company called Cerobit. And this module takes uh, maximum 15 volt input and uh, gives 3.3 volt output. So what we are going to do is we are going to provide 5 volt input and at the output we will get 3.3 volt and we will try to measure Cuisant current. So Cuisant current is basically the current consumed by this dc dc converter circuit when there is no load. So as per data sheet it should be around 500 microampere let us see with the help of power profiler kit 2 how much uh, we get 
So what we are going to do is we are going to connect uh, the V out and ground to the input side of DC DC converter and we don't need any connection on the output and in the software we will see how much power it consumes. Now let us see how to do power measurement with the help of NRF connect software. So you can go to Nordic Semiconductors website and you can download latest NRF connect software. After you have installed it, you can open NRF connect and you will be able to see this screen and you will find power profiler application. If you are not able to find, you can quickly search power and you will be able to find power profiler app. Once you open the app, this is how the screen will look like. So if your power profiler kit is connected to USB, you can select the device like this and then you can start operating. So there are two modes. One is source mode and ampere mode. So this is how you have to select. In ampere mode, LED on power profiler kit will be blue. And if you are in source mode, your power profiler kit LED will be red. Here you can set the output voltage in source mode from 800 millivolt to 5 volt. And uh, if you click this, you will enable the power output. So whatever is connected on V out, it will start giving voltage to the load. So with the help of this, we can set uh, how many samples per second sampling rate we need. And this is basically showing if you are sampling at 100 kilo samples per second, you can store data up to 432 seconds. And if you lower it, to 10 kilo samples, you can sample data up to 10 minutes. With the help of this button, we can start the sampling and we'll be able to see here all the readings. This is in order to enable whether we need time step information or not. And this is for digital channels, the low speed uh, logic analyzer. So here with the help of these uh, buttons, you can uh, select uh, which all channels you want to enable. So let's say if you want to enable two channels, you are getting now zero and one on the screen. You can export all the data with the help of this button. You can even take a screenshot for your records or documentation, right? So let us see how it works. We don't need digital channels timestamp for now. We have already connected DC DC converter module at the output and we are providing 5 volt as an input. When we enable the power and start logging, we should be able to get how much current that DC DC converter module is consuming. So you can clearly see 445.54 micro ampere is the average current this DC DC converter module is consuming, which is quite uh, near what uh, data sheet claims. You can zoom in by using scroll button of your mouse. And then for example, these peaks are coming and you want to know how many milliseconds apart uh, these peaks are. You can press shift and then click left button of your mouse and drag it to the second peak and you will be able to know the delta. This is every 6.7 milliseconds. And again, if you want to know the for how much time you know this peak is coming, we can come here, press shift, left click of your mouse, drag it till end, and you will be able to know okay, for 130 microsecond, this DC DC converter is consuming something, and then again after you know certain uh, milliseconds, it is consuming uh, some current in order to keep output at 3.3 volt at no load condition. So when you zoom in, the real time view stops, which allows you to, you know, do all the analysis. And if you want to go again into live view, you can just press this button and you'll again be able to see the live view. Here are some presets. So if you want to average for 10 millisecond or 100 millisecond, one second, three second, 10 second, one minute. So here you are getting average current. This is the maximum current or the peak current. This is for how much period this average is calculated. And then this is 
basically your current into time, your charge. So pretty easy software, very useful when we are developing low power embedded devices. Now let us talk about some of the limitations. Power Profiler Kit 2 has a voltage range from 0.8 to 5 volt. So you can connect an external supply from 0.8 volt to 5 volt. And if you are powering your device under test with the help of USB, it can only take 4.5 to 5.5. So if you have device under test or your board, which needs more than 5 volt, Power Profiler Kit 2 cannot be used. So that is one limitation. Second limitation is if it is working in a sourcing mode, which is taking power from USB, it can only supply 600 milliampere to your device under test. If you power it with an external source, you can measure up to one ampere. Now, if your device under test is having peak current of more than one ampere, Power Profiler Kit 2 cannot be used. It has minimum resolution of 100 nanoamps although there is some discrepancy in the documentation. So at different measurement range, it has different resolution. For example, from 200 nanoampere to 50 microampere range, the resolution is 0.2 microampere, which is 200 nanoampere. I think there is a documentation error. It should be 100 nanoamps. Similarly, for a range of 50 microampere to 500 microampere, the resolution is 0.5 microampere. So this is the accuracy of Power Profiler Kit at different range. Uh, typically plus minus 10% of average value and plus minus 2% as offset for all the range starting from 10 nanoampere till 50 milliampere. But from 50 milliampere to 1000 milliampere, which is one ampere, it's around 15% of the average and offset is plus minus 5%. So if you are looking for a better accuracy, this might not be a suitable power measurement tool. Although it has a limited technical spec, but if you are talking about battery powered, low power embedded systems, uh, typically using single lithium ion cell or which are using battery with uh, voltage less than five volt and current less than one ampere, this is a great tool. I highly recommend this tool and I have already purchased one. I am using this tool and I am amazed with the results. Now let us assume the technical specification of Power Profiler Kit 2 is not suitable for your requirement, especially for example when you are using dual cell battery pack or battery with higher voltage than 5 volt or the current consumption or, or peak current is more than 1 ampere. What other tools are available which could be used? So I have done research online and I have found four different tools available which could be used depending on the technical uh, specification. And uh, they are, one is Joulescope, OT Arc, another one is BATLAB One Battery Life Optimizer, and the fourth one is ZS Circuits IoT Power Profiler. If you want to learn more about these tools, you can go through my article, Power Profilers for Battery-Based Embedded System Design. I will add the link in the description below. You can go through. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to learn more about embedded system design, please visit my blog, pallavagrawal.in. Thank you very much and I will see you in my next video.